this video, we're going to use your knowledge about special line segments in a triangle in order to draw some conclusions about segments and angles. In the practice, we'll actually take this one step further and talk about how to use those conclusions in order to prove triangles congruent, which is, of course, our end game here, our final goal, where we want to be. But let's talk a little bit about drawing conclusions first of all. In the first example, we're told that line segment BD is a median of triangle ABC. So the key word here is median, and you really have to know what a median does. What's its job? What does it do? So I recall from the previous video that a median is any line segment that connects or joins midpoint to opposite vertex. So because line segment BD is a median, there he is right there, I just made him green, that's going to make D the midpoint of side AC. That's what a median does. He connects a midpoint to the opposite vertex. So one conclusion that I can draw is that D is the midpoint of segment AC. And if D is the midpoint of segment AC, that tells me that segments AD and DC have to be congruent. And as far as my reasoning is concerned, I know that D is the midpoint of AC because what a median does, the median connects or joins the midpoint to the opposite vertex. I'm able then to draw that conclusion about the segments being congruent because I know that midpoint makes, forms, creates, however you want to say it, two congruent segments. And again, when you come to class, we'll probably use the second part of that, the two congruent segments, in order to take that one step further and prove triangles. But right now, what we're really trying to focus on is that knowledge of your vocabulary and your ability to apply it to a picture or to a diagram. All right, so there's the first one. Number two says line segment AC is an altitude of triangle A, and that should say triangle A, B, D. So in order to draw conclusions here, the key word really is the word altitude. You have to know what an altitude does. You have to know that an altitude makes or forms right angles. So because segment AC is an altitude, we know that those angles that are formed at C are going to be right angles. So what conclusion are we able to draw? Well, we know that angle BCA and angle DCA are congruent right angles. And I might just say they're right angles, first of all. And how did I know that? What was my reasoning? Well, my reasoning was because of the altitude. Altitude forms or creates right angles. And another conclusion we could draw then, because they're right angles, we know they have to be congruent to each other. And that's because all right angles are congruent. A third fact that we know because of the fact that those angles at point C are right angles, we know that segment AC, the altitude, and segment BD, the third side of the triangle, have to be perpendicular to each other. And that's because anytime you have right angles, they're formed by perpendicular lines.
So you can see, especially by this example, that that one word altitude really tells us quite a lot about what's going on in the picture. And that's why it's so important that you be familiar and comfortable and used to working with those vocabulary words. If necessary, it might even be a good idea to get some index cards and make some flashcards for those. All right, the last one says segment DE is a mid-segment of triangle ABC. So again, it's really critical here that you know what it means for a segment to be a mid-segment. So the first conclusion, and there's actually a lot of conclusions that you can draw from this. If DE is a mid-segment, that tells me that points D and E are midpoints because that's what a mid-segment does. It, it joins midpoints of any two sides. So I know that D is a midpoint of side AB. I should say the midpoint because there's only one. And also, E is the midpoint of side BC. And I know this because of what a mid what it means to be a mid-segment. Mid-segment joins the midpoints of any two sides of a triangle. And if those fellows are midpoints, then I know that segments A, D, and DB are congruent. And I know that segments B, E, and E, C are congruent. And that's because midpoint makes two congruent segments. I also have to recall the properties that I know about the mid-segment. The property or the property regarding the length of the mid-segment is that its length or its measure is half that of the third side. So I know that the length of DE is equal to one half of the length of AC. And that's because I know that the length of the mid-segment is half the third side of the triangle. Another way of saying that might be to say that the length of AC is double the length of DE. That would be two ways of saying exactly the same thing. And then the fourth property I know is that I know that segment DE has to be parallel to segment AC. And that's because the mid-segment is always parallel to the third side of the triangle. So at this point, I really hope that you can appreciate how important it is that you know and understand all these vocabulary words because just by that one little word, mid-segment, in example three, we were to able to glean all these, what I'm going to call little nuggets of knowledge. We were able to figure out all these properties about what's going on in the diagram just because we knew the definition of mid-segment and the properties that, that went along with it. So again, it's more important, more critical now than ever that you really be familiar with and comfortable with working with those vocabulary words. All right, as always, I want you to take a few minutes and summarize the important takeaways that you've seen in this video, and then see if you can apply what you know and your knowledge of that vocabulary to draw some conclusions regarding those questions on the next page.